not the person in the crowd that's the cheerleader that yells out because everybody else is cheering as well, but the person who believed what they heard in the Scripture and in the Word on Sunday, the person who was actually willing to follow Christ on His journey, not just on Sunday mornings, but on all the times in between as well. You know, Christ is here with us on Sunday mornings. Christ is also waiting for us on Monday morning and Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. So may we join with Christ in His holy path during this holy week and every week of our lives. Here and proclaim the good news. 
Please join with me now in the unison prayer of illumination from your bulletin. Shall we pray? Generous God, show us the way that we shall go and guide us in your ways of life. Help us hear your teaching and counsel them, for we are lost without it. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Verses 1 through 11. This scripture is found on page 879 of your Pew Bible. Listen to this word for Holy Scripture. Mark 11, 1 through 11. And when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Beth Page and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road. And others spread leafy branches, which they had cut from the fields. And those who went before, and those who followed, cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem, and he went into the temple. And when he had looked round at everything, as was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now And the players all run. 
Sunday, if you will, Jesus' triumphant ride, and Easter morning, of course, where we celebrate the resurrection uh, of our Lord. That week, that holy week, is a very important week, not just for Jesus uh, in His time, but also for us as well, uh, even here in 2022. So this morning, I want to talk a little bit, not so much about Palm Sunday, not so much about Easter, but what happens in between the Sundays of Palm Sunday and Easter. Shall we pray? Gracious God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. When I was in high school a long time ago, uh, my church youth group, we spent a week-long retreat studying the then brand new musical Jesus Christ Superstar, which you heard a little bit of that as uh, she had played her prelude uh, this morning. Uh, it was a revelation in my life when I was 17 years old uh, to actually see and hear the gospel story presented in a rock musical uh, format. Um, and any of you who attended Jesus Christ Superstar with our church a few years back and went to the beauty and saw Jesus Christ Superstar, uh, you probably noticed how much I enjoyed and still enjoy uh, that music. My wife keeps having to bump me and tell me not to sing along, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, anyway. That musical, Jesus Christ Superstar, traces the, uh, the events of Holy Week um, from the Bible. It takes scriptural and, and reimagines them in, in various ways. And uh, One of the things that I was always struck by, whenever I see that musical, I've seen it several times, of course, I used to have an album and listen to it uh, hundreds of times probably, uh, I was always struck by that chorus of singers that's a part of the musical, of course, that is, that is following Jesus around, and of course they're there on that Palm Sunday in pictures, and they're waving the palms, and they're celebrating, and then the musical goes on, the week proceeds, and that same group of people who shout Jesus' praise and, and, and call out to Him and shout Hosanna, they change. Those people change because those same people that were once shouting their affirmation for Jesus by the end of the week are calling for his death. And that was really what stuck with me from that whole musical, that change in feeling. And I think of that again every year during Holy Week. Jesus went from being the exalted one in front of the crowd to the one who is offered up as a sacrifice by the very same crowd. And, and you know, I don't always like to dwell on that, and I must admit, for most of the year, I don't dwell on that, but uh, we don't like to dwell, I think, on the reality that Jesus was betrayed. Jesus was denied by his closest uh, uh, friends. Uh, by his adopted family, if you will, and, and the fact that Jesus was abandoned and left all alone. We like to stick with the Palm Sunday excitement and then the Easter joy. We're not too keen on the Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday pain, and certainly not the reality of the crucifixion and how painful and how Difficult that would have had to be for anyone to endure. Holy Week is so named because it's the holiest week of the church year. It's uh, usually also the busiest. Uh, many pastors, whether they admit it or not, know that when we announce these extra services on Monday, Thursday, and Easter sunrise, we know that a lot of you are sitting back there going, oh no. Uh, I have to go. Is this something I need to do? Should I really be doing this or not? And, and you know, during our regular week, it's difficult a lot of times to convince people to attend extra services. 
that are not part of our regular Sunday morning worship time. Um, yeah, it's not going to be too difficult to be here next Sunday at 1045, but uh, 7 in the morning, 6.30 on Thursday. You know, Thursday after a long day at work, you know, you just want to go home and have dinner and sit down and relax for a little while or uh, maybe you have to tackle that pile of laundry that's built up for a week. Uh, um, you don't want to take the car out one more time. You don't want to have to drive to church and sit through another service, particularly one that's Pastor Steve says, I'm not going to be all that joyful after all, but we will be celebrating communion, the Lord's Supper. And then there's the sunrise service. Why is this so early? Is it really worth it to get up that early and be here at 7 o'clock in the morning to, to see a youth-led uh, scene telling a story that you've probably heard 100, 150 times before? Do you really want to go through that? No longer world in language if you don't. I won't. I won't be taking attendance at any of those special services. I don't want to take attendance at our regular service. I must admit, I did. I actually did take attendance by name during the height of the pandemic in case we had to do any contact tracing. Uh, you might have noticed me writing things down on my uh, little pad every Sunday morning during that time. Uh, but other than that, I don't, now I'm not doing it anymore, so we don't have to contact Grace anymore. Uh, I don't take attendance. I don't take your name, whether you're here or not. Uh, <clears throat> but <clears throat> even pastors, even pastors sometimes think, eh, Palm Sunday again? Monday, Thursday? Easter, sunrise? You know? Yeah, I, I've been there. Not just in this church, but in a lot of different churches. Uh, and we're going to hear the same story again. Uh, but the occupational hazard, one of them, of, of being a pastor is you can't call in sick during Holy Week. Uh, that's, 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 that's forbidden. You just can't do that. So I will be here. I will hear those stories again and be a part of that. Um, most churches, and I, so I'll include our church, First Presbyterian Church here in St. Genevieve, you know, we're pretty good at doing Sunday morning worship. But sometimes we're not as good about acknowledging what comes between the Sundays. In Sunday morning worship, we often focus on the joy as we have this morning. We sing uplifting hymns, all glory, laud, and honor to Christ, Redeemer, King. We, we hear hopeful sermons most of the time. Sometimes they're not as hopeful. Uh, we smile, we shake hands, we dress up. Um, uh, we talk about grace and blessings and gratitude. Now, none of those are a bad thing. Those are good things. And I hope you enjoy that aspect of coming to worship. But when most of us leave on Sunday morning at noon, or fairly close to noon, depending on how long I talk that particular morning, um, when we leave, we step into a different world than we experienced right here this morning. And we know, or we should know, that between Sundays, many people are facing struggles. We mentioned a few of them here in our concerns. Many people are sick or injured. Some people are dying. Some people are bereaved because they lost a loved one. Some are depressed, some are heartbroken, some are betrayed, some are all alone. Many are wrestling with doubt about their faith. And if you choose to come to church on Palm Sunday and Easter, you might think that we in the church don't really know about any of those difficult times of life. But to me, the most comforting part of Holy Week is not the waving of these triumphal palms on Palm Sunday, or even the, the lilies and the joy of Easter Sunday's resurrection. It's really what happens in between the Sundays. It's Jesus on Monday, Thursday, sharing a table with the people He loved the most. It's Him washing their feet, showing that the mark, that the mark of a leader is really whether or not they will serve other people. 
And it's Jesus still loving those disciples even though He knew that at best they're going to abandon Him and at worst, they're going to betray Him to the authorities. And it's Jesus in the garden alone which we have depicted in the front of our chancellery up here. Jesus in the garden alone, heartbroken and struggling between what He wanted to do as a human and what He knew that He had to do as a Son of God. And on Good Friday, it continues, the world turns against Jesus and the ones who cheered Him on Palm Sunday in Jerusalem now egg on His death. And they say, put Him to death. We would rather you free a criminal than put Jesus to death. So with this sentence, Jesus begins suffering. He suffers through, through beings. He suffers terribly. He calls out to God who we don't hear answering Him at all. He doubts. He feels pain. He feels loss. He feels grief. That's what is happening to him. And in the end, he loses his human life as he knew it here on this earth. You know, as a pastor, I'm sometimes asked by those who are going through a difficult time whether God gets angry with them when they have doubts about God, when they have doubts about their faith, or when they wonder why God is not answering their prayers. Does God get upset with them because they don't think God's answering their prayers? Sometimes I ask, does God really understand that we're suffering, that we're all alone? That we're hurting, that we're in pain. And when they people ask me those types of questions, I point not to the Christ of Palm Sunday or the resurrection on Easter, but to the Christ of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. The Christ who lived as one of us, who loved as one of us, who even doubted as one of us who suffered as one of us, and who died as one of us. And only then, after that, do I point to the Christ who rose again, the Christ who overcame the worst that this world had to throw at him. I sometimes think that we forget the lessons of Holy Week for most of the rest of the year. You know, a lot of churches have stopped doing any type of Holy Week special services because a lot of, you know, poor attendance or it's just too much trouble. People don't really want to come out on Thursday evening or early on Sunday morning. And uh, instead, we try to get everything done on Palm Sunday and on Easter uh, regular worship service. But my friends, when we forget Holy Week, I wonder if we're losing that time that we really have to sit with Christ in Christ's own human struggles. And I wonder if when we lose that time, then we also lose our ability to sit with others in their own struggle. And even to be with ourselves in our own struggles. What would the Christian life look like if we took the time to sit with Christ during Holy Week to think about the pain and the suffering and the struggling that He was going through. And to give Him thanks for doing that on our behalf. What if we became known as the people not just who knew what to do on Sunday mornings, but the ones who knew how to stay with others when life was falling apart? just as Christ asked us to do on Monday, Thursday. Or the ones who could stand by and still love and respect you, even when you call out your doubts, as Jesus did. He called out His doubts in the garden and when He was on the cross. What would happen if we weren't just known for our Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday celebrations, but for our solidarity with other people? each night of the week for our after
afternoon and morning compassion that we shared with others on Monday through Saturday. My friends, we have the capacity to be those people. And we have it because Christ has called us to be those people. All we have to do is be willing to make the journey with Him. Not just on Sundays, but on all the days in between as well. You know, the world has plenty of Sunday morning Christians. We need a lot more of the weekday ones. Today we wave our palms. We shout Hosanna. And we look ahead to next Sunday and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But when you leave this place today, take your palm with you. You don't have to leave it. Take it with you. And consider keeping it around at least for this week. It's going to shrivel up if you don't put it in water. Even if you put it in water, it doesn't last that long. Uh, you don't have to put it in water. Keep it around just for this week, longer if you want. Keep it as a reminder of who we are on Palm Sunday. And then, if times get hard and the week grows tough, Look at this palm as a reminder of who you should be, who you could be, who it is that God calls you to be. Not the person in the crowd that's the cheerleader that yells out because everybody else is cheering as well, but the person who believed what they heard in the Scripture and in the Word on Sunday. The, purpose, the person who is actually willing to follow Christ on His journey, not just on Sunday mornings, but on all the times in between as well. You know, Christ is here with us on Sunday mornings. Christ is also waiting for us on Monday morning, on Tuesday afternoon, and Wednesday evening. So may we join with Christ in His holy path during this holy week and every week of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is number 21 in your hymnal. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great redeemer prayer. It's found on page 21. As I mentioned, we're going to sing the first, second, and fifth verses of this great hymn. So let us rise together either body or in spirit and sing.
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, He was crucified and upon His fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Gracious and loving God, creator of all things, our rock, our foundation, we gather in worship on this Palm Sunday, and we now come to commune with you in prayer. We come seeking peace in this world, safe harbor for loved ones who are now in harm's way, and comfort for those whom we love, who are hurting and feeling separated from you. We also come with our own individual needs, our hurts, our concerns. We come with our conflicts and we come with hearts that are often not where they should be on Sunday morning. So as we desire to do our best to be steadfast in our faith, our God, we ask that you help us with our unbelief. <coughs> where we are lacking, lift us to know that we may be in right relationship with you if only we continue to turn to you, O God. We come this morning also seeking understanding. So we ask that you help us to continue to hear and to recognize the answers in our lives that you provide. And as we come to you in prayer, may we first and always be thankful. 
May we recognize in gratitude your presence with us now and always. And know in our hearts that even before we make our request known unto you that you have heard it. And you are even now ministering to us through your unconditional love and grace. Our God, we ask that you be with all that we have mentioned by name this day. Comfort them, uplift them as only your spirit can. Be with those in nursing homes and those who may be in hospitals. Give them a sense of love and security that they too are in your hands. Help us now to move from our concerns and seeing limitations to recognizing your hand upon us and truly knowing that with you all things are possible. And for that we give you thanks, our God. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Our offertory plates in which you can place your tithes and offerings are found at the back of the sanctuary on the small table uh, and also near the door as you depart. If you did not have the opportunity to drop your tithe or offering for the Sunday into the offering plates, you will have that opportunity as you are leaving uh, this morning, uh, this place. And once again, we thank you for the many contributions that you continue to make to the ministries of this church. Without them, these ministries would not be able to take place. So now I hear this offertory blessing uh, for those offerings that have already been given and those yet to be given. Gracious God, we give to you once again this day our tithes and our offerings. We ask that you bless them first and then that they may be used to help further your kingdom on this Palm Sunday throughout this Holy Week, through Easter and into the rest of this year. We know your kingdom will be established someday and is in the process of doing so now. So also use our talents and abilities to follow Christ in establishing that kingdom on this earth. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Because He Lives. We're going to sing the first and the second verse. Remember, take your palm home with you uh, this Sunday. If you want to uh, wave it around during this hymn, you can do so as well. Uh, but we're going to sing the first and second verse in number 358. Because he lives, shall we rise in body, mind, and spirit, and sin.
have one last thing I want to share with you. Remember to take your palms with you, but as I was going through my uh, material for uh, this week, um, I ran across something by your mother, Donna. Uh, this is a meditation for Palm Sunday, written by Doris Judy. Uh, it was used in March of 1999. And so as we leave this place this morning and consider Palm Sunday, listen to these few thoughts uh, from this uh, wonderful woman who was a part of our church. Enter the holy city. Gates are open. Love keeps them open. God's love. It never puts bringing light to dark places, exposing the corrupt, inspiring the lonely, questioning the authorities and all the powers that believe themselves in control of the temple. Join the parade. Run ahead. Stand on the sideline. Follow after the king, meek and humble. humble. The king who is out with the people, out where healing is needed, where death needs diminishing, where life with its joys and sorrows goes on daily. Jesus loves us, hears our rejoicing, but knows we do not understand that some hearts fear, some hearts do not receive, some hearts close their minds. But my friends, focus on Jesus, who believes in the future, His future and our future with God. Without God's help and power to give life, to exalt, there is no closure. But with God's help and power, there is sustaining presence for our lives. And as we are present to one another, there is an end of weariness, silence, hiding, and a beginning of affirmation of each other and thanksgiving. Hope is for all who follow Jesus, for all who make their way to the cross. Their sin is forgiven and the future fills with joy of resurrected life. My friends, there is peace after storms, terrible and wonderful events. Roads are open, gates are lifted, tongues confess the power of God to steadfastly love forever, love the ongoing, ever-becoming participants in the life everlasting. My friends, you are the ongoing, ever-loving participants in God's life everlasting. Go in peace this day. Amen.